What up nerds? My name is Leslie Smith. Welcome to the weekly reading wrap up here on the Nerdy Narrative. For those of you who might be new, my weekly reading wrap up is where I talk about my week of reading, what I read, what I'm still reading, and then what I plan to read next. Before we get into the books on Monday, if you missed it, my video where I did the Deja Vu book tag that was created by my friend Walker Wright 7 It's a tag that is centered around some questions regarding rereading. If you reread, if you do, are there certain types of books or genres that you focus on. Just some in-depth questions that I had a lot of fun answering. And then on Wednesday, my review for Karen Hewler's The Splendid City went up, which was part of the online book tour hosted by Angry Robot Books. So it was a delight to be able to be a part of that. So if you missed those, I will have the links down in the description box below. What do you have to look forward to next week? Well, I'm so glad that you asked. So on Monday, I did a review for a really cute manga that my friend Star put on my radar, Stitch and the Samurai. And I thought, what better time to post this than around Stitch Day, which is June 26 or 626, because we all know that Stitch was originally called Experiment 626. It was a really cute manga. I hope you're excited to see that. And then on Wednesday, it is time for my July TBR already. I cannot believe how fast this year is flying by. Speaking of TBRs, let's talk about my June TBR. I am participating in the Magical Creatures Readathon, which is the summer readathon hosted by Shelf Space. I was looking this morning to see about my progress with prompts. Of all the books that I've read, only two of them fulfill prompts. The rest do not fill up a prompt and one that was for a prompt, I ended up DNFing. I'll go ahead and satisfy your curiosity as to what that DNF was and I can hear the gasp of surprise all over right now as I'm showing. It is the first book in the Firefly series, Big Damn Hero. What happened here? Why did I DNF this book? And I mean, I DNF'd it quick. I didn't even make it through chapter three. Here's why. I'm a huge fan of the TV show Firefly. All of the episodes that they had filmed, I do have on Blu-ray. I have watched those over and over and over. So when I discovered there were books, I was really excited because anytime I've ever seen a film adaptation, a TV series adaptation, I've always loved the book more because you get so much more detail, so much more nuance. You know, when you're watching it visually, you have to pick up on the cues and figure out kind of what the characters are thinking when they're not speaking. The book, it's there for you. And so there's so much more information just fleshed out and there's so much more dimension to it. That's what I was expecting here. I thought this is going to be so much better. We're gonna get so much detail. And that is not what happened. This was so flat. This book, the portion I've read of it was exactly the first episode that aired. I'm okay with that. I don't mind that. What I didn't like is, it's like somebody was sitting on their couch just visually watching and taking exactly what they saw and putting it on paper. There was no depth added to it. And I was really disappointed. And the whole time I was reading it, I was seeing the scenes playing out and I was just thinking, I like the TV show better. I thought the actors and actresses did a much better job of bringing the characters to life on screen than this did. And after I read the first chapter, I thought, maybe if I get the audiobook, it'll be a better experience. So I sacrificed one of my Audible credits to get it. And even listening to it on the audiobook, I still was not happy. The only thing I was wanting to do constantly was put it down and go pull out my Blu-rays and watch the show again. So I DNF'd it. Out of Stephen King's Skeleton Crew collection, I read The Ballad of a Flexible Bullet. It was amazing. It was definitely closer to novella length than it was short story length, but it was wonderful. King just really showed his writing genius in this story. And what's so funny is he has in conversation in the story, he tells you exactly what he's doing and he does it so well. And what did he do? There's a man, an editor. He's with one of his clients and his agent. They're having dinner and he's telling them a story about something that happened in his life. The whole story is just about madness. And at one point in the conversation, the editor tells them how some writers possess this really rare gift for just cooling their prose the more passionately they feel about their subject. And when you entered their world, how everything suddenly seemed very logical, that's exactly what he did with the story. The story is insane, but the way that it is laid out and just slowly developed 
it made so much sense. I really love this one. I think that's going to be one of my top contenders for favorite in the collection. And I believe I only have one more story left and we'll be done with Skeleton Crew and moving on to the next one. I also caught up to the Joan Didion read along that's hosted by Kate over at the Literary Apothecary. I read Slouching Towards Bethlehem and On Keeping a Notebook. Slouching Towards Bethlehem was so odd. It just felt that Joan was traveling around this particular area of San Francisco and she was literally writing down what people said, their conversations, their actions. And I guess what it did is it showed how the culture was changing. It was 1967. Hippies were starting to emerge. Drugs were being experimented on very heavily. And it just seemed like it focused in this one area of San Francisco and Joan was just down there reporting on it. I just didn't find it a compelling read. But the other essay that I read by her on keeping a notebook, now that one spoke to my heart because I have so many notebooks. I have one sitting here in front of me that I write about reading in. I have another notebook that has all of my video stuff in it and notes because I keep all that stuff. I have a memory box that I put together at the end of every year. I keep ticket stubs, brochures if I go to an event, just all that sort of thing, notebooks, and I put it all in that box at the end of the year. So one day when I get older, I can go back and say, well, what did I do in 2000? I can pull that box out and just go through those memories again. I know, I'm weird. And then of course, earlier, I mentioned that I was going to have a review coming out for the Stitch manga on Monday. So I read these three manga this week. They were a lot of fun. I smiled the entire time. It is recommended for ages 12 and up, and I do feel it is definitely more appealing to the younger side of that spectrum. But if you're a Stitch lover like me, you're gonna have a good time with these. You know, if you're looking for something fun and fluffy and just a light read to either break up a complicated read or maybe one that gave you a book hangover, but you wanna read something, you wanna enjoy something, you wanna do something that's gonna spark you back up to reading again, manga is definitely a preferred method that I recommend also reading an old favorite or something that just gives you joy that always helps me let's see what else did i finish i finally finished richard thomas's collection of short stories tribulations oh my word this collection is amazing i am going to be working on my review for this one very soon any short story collection that i mention, i do post daily about on my instagram so if you're interested in just seeing little mini reviews or sometimes i just share a quote check me out on instagram that way you get that info daily or you can look back through those as you like without having to wait on my written review which takes me a while written reviews take me forever to write because I just agonize over my words for so long. I also finished W.P. Wiles' The Last Blade Breeze. I love this story. I love this world. I love the history, the lore, the religion. I love every aspect about this. I don't think there is anything in this story I did not like. I even, honestly, a tertiary character is my favorite character. I just counted the pages until I could read more about that character and he always delivered without fail. But The Last Blade Priest comes out on July 12th. If you're a fan of things such as a magical mountain that is worshiped as a god or demigods who take the shape of large birds. I always pictured crows for some reason when I read about the custodians. I don't know why. What about stories where the elves are the enemy? Oh my gosh, these elves were some kind of bad news. And these different families that are spread out along this mountain range that worship the mountain were conquered by this other larger group of people called the Lee. And so you have that dynamic of colonization and how they treat each other and react to one another. And this religion they're a part of. Did I mention human sacrifice and necromancy? There is so much here to just delve into and enjoy. But this is one that I think anyone who's a big lover of grim dark, dark fantasy, military fantasy. I think you would love this one. I know I did. And next I read with a quickness The Coward by Stephen Aryan. Another one I have a full written review on which I'll have linked below if you want to check it out. Oh my goodness. I read this one in preparation for getting a chance to read The Warrior next month. This book was amazing and personally for me 
It was the characters that really made this a unique and enjoyable experience for me. This one is another that I would call a bit of a dark fantasy. This is the story of Kel Crestia, who's being called upon by King Bledsoe once again to go into the north, into the frozen north, and investigate the cold that's just seeping south. The ice is once again just starting to creep towards the south. And the last time this happened, they discovered there was an ice lich that was the root cause of it. And Kel, along with a band of fierce, famous heroes, went north and slayed the ice lich. You know, I've just never read a fantasy hero that was written so realistically, so logically, like what this did to him. Every other story I've ever read, the heroes killed without compunction. It did not ever affect them. It didn't bother them. People died in battle all the time. None of that got to them. And this did, and he just, oh my goodness. It was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Again, I've got a full writ review for it up on my blog. I'll have it linked below if you wanna check it out. Now's a great time to read The Coward because book two in this duology is coming out in August, at the beginning of August, I believe it is. And I just think it's one you're not gonna to wanna to miss. Oh gosh, I have one sitting right in front of me that I completely missed talking about when I was talking about my short stuff I read. I read a couple of stories out of Zora Neale Hurston's collection, The Complete Stories. The first one I read is called The Conscious of the Court. Laura Lee is a black woman who works for a white woman, Miss Celestine. And when the story opens up, we're in court. Laura Lee has been accused of beating the stuffing out of another white man who said that he gave a loan to Miss Celestine. Miss Celestine did not pay when she was supposed to, so he showed up to repossess the furniture, the items that she put up as collateral against the loan, and Laura Lee beat the stuffing out of him. And what was so great about this story is in those times, typically they would just automatically say, Laura Lee was guilty, but she captured the heart of the judge. She didn't have an attorney, so he sort of represented her or helped coach her about what she should do. And he got her on the witness stand and she told the story of what happened. And it was, it was so good. The other story I read was called The Bone of Contention. Guys, all I'm gonna tell you about that one is one fellow beat another fellow with a donkey bone and you just need to read it. Everybody should read a little something of Zora Neale Hurston. Honestly, it only takes the right short story and you're gonna be like me. You're gonna be flying through all of her work. I am sadly almost done. I think I only have a couple of stories left in this collection and then I need to get back over into her nonfiction essay collection of which I've learned so much and I think it's going to help me have a really enjoyable time when I go back and reread all of her work. It wasn't possible because I've been reading her stuff for years. This came out at the beginning of 2022, but I wish and going forward, if anybody says, where should I start with Zorna Harson? I'm gonna recommend her nonfiction essay collection because I've learned so much about her you know, that I just feel really enhances all of her fiction work. I can't wait to reread it with what she has taught me from her nonfiction essays. So since I've just talked about what I'm gonna read next, I'll just keep going. Oh, no, I can't keep going. I have to tell you first what I'm still reading. I'm just all out of whack here today. We're just gonna roll with it. I also started An Alchemy of Mask and Mirrors by Curtis Craddock. This is my patron pick of the month for June. It was chosen by my patron, Kate. Y'all, the first chapter put me through the ringer. I mean, I ran through a just gamut of emotions. Here's what happened. Reading chapter one, the first part of it was full of so many nautical terms that I was thinking, I am not gonna understand this. Luckily, I got it from my library on my Kindle, so I'm just tapping the words so the dictionary is looking them up for me, which I should also mention, this book has long chapters. So I get a little bit deeper into the chapter and we get out of that nautical because we were on an airship, which was cool. We get into the story a little bit and I'm thinking, I'm not going to like this. On the one hand, it's so over my head with the nautical descriptions. I was like, I'm not gonna connect to this. I'm already not enjoying the nautical stuff. This is looking to be yet another DNF, but I'm gonna finish at least two or three chapters before I make that decision. That's when it changed. By the end of that chapter, I was all in with both feet, both hands, and my nose, and I was ready to go. I have since read two more chapters, maybe three, 
I just kind of got crazy with it. It's so good. How have I never heard of Curtis Craddock before? Have you guys, have y'all read this series? It's called The Risen Kingdoms. And when I first looked into it, when Kate chose it for me, it's blurred by a lot of fantasy authors I really love, but I've never heard of this before. And it's hard to find too, apparently. I don't know if it's out of print. You know, the only places I could see to purchase it were secondhand. And I decided, I don't know this author. Let me get it from my library. I think I'm gonna need this series on my shelves, guys. I am loving it. So by the time I talk to you guys next week, I should be finished with it. But in conjunction with that, I kind of let time slip away from me. I need to read The Lake of the Dead, which is the June book club pick for the Wine and Crime book club. And when I say reading conjunction, I mean drop everything and read this book because the live show is tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern. It's fine though, really. It's like 180 pages. I should be able to knock this out today. So I will leave you with that, you guys, because I need to get off of here and go get to reading this book so I can be ready for the live show tomorrow. Which if you read the book or perhaps seen one of the film adaptations, definitely come by the channel tomorrow and join us for the discussion. This was written in 1942, but it is still considered Norway's all time best thriller. I am so excited to experience that for myself and talk about it with you guys tomorrow. For those of you who are participating in the Magical Creatures Readathon, let me know down below how you're doing, how many prompts you've completed. I've only completed two. It is not going well. I DNF two that were prompts. Oh my gosh, that was just my luck. I hope you all have had a great week. I hope you have a wonderful weekend plan and I will see you on Monday.